Welcome to the Hard Rock Live here at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida, where tonight, Don King Productions, in association with Hard Rock Live, Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Client First, and Wealth TV present Viva Don King! Tonight's bouts are under the auspices of the Florida State Boxing Commission, Executive Director Tom Malloy. Your physicians at ringside, Dr. Jerry Obed, and Florida Boxing Hall of Famer, Dr. Alan Fields. Your timekeeper at the bell is Tom Dowd, your matchmaker this evening, Florida Boxing Hall of Famer, Al Bonani. All right, fans, this next bout is scheduled for eight rounds in the super middleweight division. Your judges for this contest, Michael Pernick, Bill Ray, and Rocky Young. Your referee in charge of the action is Telus Asamenios. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the green with blue and silver. He weighed in at 173 and three quarters pounds, with a record of 18 wins, three losses, one draw, 17 wins, coming by way of knockout from Memphis, Tennessee. Please welcome La Farrell, Memphis Fairway Bunting. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black with white. He weighed in at 170 and one half pounds, with a record of 17 wins, three losses, 11 wins, coming by way of knockout from La Huayra, Venezuela, the former world title challenger. He is Guzmir, the Azucar Torpedo Perdomo. That's a little good final instructions here. Gentlemen, you have received instructions in the dressing rooms. Obey my commands at all times and protect yourselves at all times. Shake hands, good luck, and God bless. All right, so this nine-round bout getting ready to start. Kind of a relatively new thing in boxing rather than the eight-rounders. You have the nine-round limit now, and I guess among other things, it... Uh, Cuts down to the draws. You get that extra round, the odd round. So here we go. Bunty and Perdomo. 17 and 3 against 18 and 3. So now it's just a matter of how good are the guys you fought. That's the separator. One of the interesting things here is, is Perdomo likes to use his jab and, and work from the outside. A lot of times height is to his advantage. But he's dealing with a guy with a 79 inch reach, which is uh, A, longer than his, and B, very unusual. Yeah, a little deceptive uh, yesterday when we saw that, that reach number come up during the fighter meetings. I think we have the prize for the fighter, too. Doesn't look like the reach would be that big when you look at his frame, but there it is. Well, if you use that leverage, you can generate a lot of power by it. And there's long arms. Perdomo pouring with the jab, and there's a slip. Let's see if Perdomo thought it was more than that. Left hand, spin around. Something very cautious here at the moment. You can see this. Perdomo lining him up here. Good body shot by Perdomo. The fun thing is already looking for an opportunity to shoot that straight right hand, which against the southpaw can do a lot of damage. And he needs to shake off the fear factor a little bit here, does Bunting. Take a shot, let his hands go, because he's on the receiving end of everything. Case of nerves, maybe. Sure, he's in there with a guy who's fought for the world title. He's very relaxed. Lead right hand by Bunting. Good idea against the lefty. Perdomo closing in here. Then a good body shot by Perdomo. And he's Bunting trapped in. Both of them are right on the DMZ there at that point. And Bunting tried for a hook off of that as he's trying to line something up and Perdomo keeps him boxed in and then works the body. 
Perdomo, Perdomo needs to be a little bit careful here. Those hooks are kind of wide and he's leaning forward. He can get caught. And you look at him coming towards you. He looks gangly. And you, you go against him and you think, well, there's small opportunities, places to hit him. But you have to get inside of his reach. That is what Bunting will try to do. He's got a good reach of his own as we come to the end of round one. Fairly cautious round there by both guys, really. Deion Walker giving uh, uh, some instruction here. Funding is self-managed and basically sort of seems to operate on his own. Now watch Perdomo's right in here. It comes. Bango. Just missed. But you can see how open he is to get countered. And as you take a look at those replays, it give you an idea that Perdomo would just like to shorten the distance a little bit and then try that big shot. So here we are, opening fight of Viva Don King. Dave Fontempo and Ron Borges with you here in Seminole Hard Rock Casino, South Florida, USA. Perdomo, 17 and 3, 11 knockouts in the black trunks. Hey, Bunting, 18, 3 and 1, 17 knockouts. Big shot by Perdomo off the break. He tried to get the jump on Bunting, and he did. You can see how long that, that you can't even call it a hook. The sort of overhand left. And if Bunny can get in, inside and get in the pocket there and, and counter. What do you think of where On punch, right? Perdomo is keeping that right hand of his down by his waist? Right. And, and Bunting, you know, had made clear to us that every southpaw he's fought up to this point, he's knocked out. Shows you how he would like to try to do it, the lead right hand there. Exactly. The lead right hand coming in. And, and the opening is there. Tries it here. Does manage to tap Perdomo. Perdomo. Each guy trying to do something with his jab. Yeah, Perdomo not using his jab at all and, and trying to set anything up. He's just, right. he's, leap, he's just sort of leaping in there. Hard to work that way. Speaking of leaping, that's what Bunting did. Couldn't wait to get that lead right hand home, so he leaped with it and came up short and he takes a shot with. He landed it again there. Hey, both of these guys have enough defensive liability that either guy could get caught. It could be a, a big one punch shot opportunity for either guy. Yeah, I'm trying to land that right hand a little bit more. Left hand getting in by Perdomo as he was going backwards. Cornerman, we do inform both these guys jabs are legal. You can actually use it to set up other things. Yeah, you know, it, it, you're in the 10 point bus system, three knockdown rule in effect, standing eight count is not in effect. And one of those key rules is the jab is allowed. The jab is allowed. Even encouraged. Even in a nine round fight. So we come to the end of round two, Perdomo and Bunting. Bunting Both got looking for the big shot. Bunting got the right hand in there. He didn't get to turn it over. Repita por la nariz, papá. Repita por la nariz, no repita por la boca. Y bota por la boca, vamos, vamos. Vamos, repita por la nariz, bota por la boca, vamos. 
Talk with a little gas. They do. And it's a little early for that, don't you think? Yes. Bunting, I think, really has to open it up here a little bit. And, and take a shot at least to land enough to make Perdomo say, okay, wait a minute. I, I'm not going to just walk in there without even using my jack. So we start round three, scheduled for nine in the super middleweight division. Kuzmir Perdomo in the black, 17 and three, 11 knockouts. Viral Bunting in the green, 18, three and one, 17 knockouts. Records are similar. What will be the separator with these guys? And what else is similar is they're both trying for one big shot. Bunting was throwing a little bit uh, more of the right hand and the left behind it in that early exchange. So he may have decided to take my shot. Good left hand gets in from Perdomo. And the jab is a range finder, then he loads up with the left hand. And this is a telegraph scenario for Bunting. He could jump in inside of that if he could time it right. If you're a counter puncher, that's what you should be looking for. And certainly said what he, that's what he was looking for. Now Bunting going with lefty and walks into a big left hand. That is an experiment that went awry. Bad idea. And, you know, we've seen people switch in fights and, you know, the... If you do it haphazardly, you don't go all the way with it, you can walk into trouble. And Bunting did. Bunting is a converted southpaw. But he boxes orthodox. And in this kind of situation, you need to stick with your own knitting. Do what you do, not what the other guy does. It seems like you switch just for the heck of it. You pay a price. Bunting did get it. He's got to follow him behind him. As he just tried to do there, but he missed. He did it again. Right hand, left hook. Missed them both. At least Bunting was able to stop the big left hand that Perdomo had loaded up. hand that time by Perdomo. Jab and the left hand was tighter. And then he just missed with the big one. Perdomo's closing that distance a little bit. Bunny has landed his right hand just enough to make him respect. Bunting, you've got to think the bombs are getting closer. They better do something. And they're closing in around him. Bunting tries to do a little more. They open it up. And now Bunting. A couple shots on Perdomo. May have something to look forward to in round four. Tried to leap in, leap in there too, too quickly with bounce. It's bad. Punting knows what he wants to do, he just hasn't been able to do it. So Perdomo has only fought once in the last 20 months himself, so his timing, I'm sure, is, is a problem for him here. What's the jab? Straight left hand. That's what he wants. That's what Perdomo wants to keep doing. There it is. He get banged. And... That's a timing thing, and when you've fought one time in, in 20 months. Need the water. Works fine in the gym, perhaps. But now you're here on fight night, it's a little bit different. Uh, you miss by a couple inches, and that's the difference between landing a nice shot and a terrific shot. But here we are in the round four. He'll keep trying to close the distance. Who's near Perdomo and LaFaro Bunting. Every time I look at Bunny, that right hand is cocked to throw. It would be nice if he threw it. Yeah, 
gets frustrating. You know, you're sitting there, you're ready, but you have to reload, and then you reload, you have to reset your whole method of attack. Was bringing the fight to him, you know, he's the aggressor in there, which was what Bunny anticipated and what you would think he would do. I mean, if you're Perdomo, and you look at a guy like Bunny and say, Look, I'm a superior fighter here, I'm going to be the aggressor. So he's trying to do on the outside here, and he's got Bunting moving back. Perdomo has been able to cut off the ring with Bunting's help very easily in this fight. One thing is for sure, we talk about the opportunity here. Neither guy has had any difficulty finding his opponent. Now, there's not two defensive wizards in there, that's, that's for sure. Long left hand there. Which should make each guy want to load up, as Perdomo as he just does did. there. Perdomo lines up a big left hand and scores. Another big left hand. Even fake with the jab, load up the big shot. You watch the Domo in there, and you, and you can see openings. It's easy for me to say, I'm saying, you know, throw punches at me, but you're waiting for Bunny to unload. Counter. We're seeing that Perdomo doesn't even have to jab his way in. No, he just walks it. Bunting is content to let Perdomo the heavy lifting in terms of setting the pace, hoping that he can catch Perdomo in a mistake. The rarely seen jab. Interesting what it does for you. It would be effective for Perdomo if he would use it. Body shot by Perdomo. A, a good example of what we're talking about. Oh, he's open for a left hook. Or hook. For, off of that uh, jab and Bunny didn't throw. He did there and he Well, it's a party in South Florida tonight. Love you, Joey. Don Everybody King's having a birthday good party. Time. <laughs> yep. These are the nice Don King, and all these promoters, they live for. This is what they live for. And a lot of people look at these things, and there's a lot of work. To step back, man. For a guy like King, it's a, it is a part. Keep him in the middle of the ring, man. Only go to the ropes. Box him. Great. 80 years old. Box him. It's a lot of energy coming from him throughout this. Box him. Keep it tight. And this is a celebration for him, and here's Perdomo in our opening wild, fight. A wild overhand right that he's landed fairly effectively. But you can see how open he is. If you throw a... A left cross, you can't miss him. But if you throw it after he leaves, you will miss him. All right, so we start round five. Guzmir Perdomo and LaFaro Bunting in the super middleweight division. Perdomo has had the edge setting the pace. He's the lefty. By far the aggressor, so you know he's winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at all these would-be jabs by both guys. Watch when their jab hands are near each other. I could have been seven or eight punches thrown, and it's all fakes. A punch, a punch, a punch. Looping left hand, though. But again, off balance. And in Perdomo's defense, the fact that you, when you fight once in 20 months, this is what's going to happen. Well, you have to get these kind of fights out of your system if you want to move on. And you can simulate a lot of it in the gym, but maybe not all of it. You have to have some, some fire, some risk. I'll be worn for low in here. He's going to have that in the future. And you know, he's aiming from so far out. You can see it would not necessarily even be a... Intentional shot, but when he's so far out, he's going to aim bad. Right, he's not in really in position to land. If he if he was moving more forward and trying to the pocket, he left. Right. 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 right hand lead by 
Bunting gets in. You know, one of the problems for guys like Bunting, Bunting worked for three and a half years as a sparring partner for various people in, in Europe. He didn't really uh, box in competitive fights during that period of time. And if you're not careful, you suddenly get the mindset, and that's sort of the way he's fighting like tonight, uh, that I'm a sparring partner as opposed to uh, a competitive fight. Yeah, I'll take a few shots. I'll throw some back once in a while, but I don't have to double up. I don't have to really press anything. You, th you start thinking that way. And you, and suddenly you're not thinking like a fighter who's coming here to win the fight. Good little right hand through there. That's missed. But he throws nothing behind it, which is sort of like a sparring fight. Perdomo continues to set the pace. Paul of that jab. Jab in the right hand by Bunting. Again, trying to play off of Perdomo. Good left hand there by Perdomo. Just missed landing flush on the chin. That one did not miss. That was good left hand. That's probably the best punch of the fight. Here's where Bunting doesn't want to be. On the road. Nothing good happens to him in the road. Now, this is not the first time Bunny's been in. The Reverend Al Sharpton himself with the weekend off from his television show on MSNBC. A friend of Don King, so we see them together a lot. We used to work for Don King back in the day. There's Don himself, the man of all flags. Now, this is not the first time Bundy's been in with you know, a world-class guy. I mean, he thought Gene Pascal lost the decision to him, who was a future champion, in, in a fight in which he had to lose 30 pounds in three weeks, which is sort of the fate of these kind of fighters. Phone rings, take the fight. Talk about uh, self-management. He said, well, what do you do when you disagree with your manager? I slap myself. And it is a difficult road to make your own fights, decide which ones are worth the risk. Yeah, a manager, who, somebody else might tell you, hey, you're not really in the shape to do this. But you might make the choice yourself to go after the box and take a chance a little before you're ready. Yeah, in that fight when the, uh, against Pascal, when the phone rang, he weighed 200 pounds. 468 pound fight that was coming in three weeks. And his, he had a perfect explanation for why he took the fight. He said, I got $13,500, and there's no other way I can make that in three weeks. So he, you know, he's a businessman. And right now, his business is throwing his hands, and he's not doing it. Right hand lead here by Bunting, but Perdomo gets there with his jab and straight left hand. Perdomo was looking for the body shot. It was blocked, and then he moves and fires a good right hook to the body. He'll try to do that again. And you also get the sense that Perdomo not only wants to throw that right hook, but move to that area and then throw the straight left hand down Fine. the middle. Right. This is where Perdomo has had done his best work when he could back Bunting up on the ropes. Good left hand by Perdomo and Bunting is nailed a little bit and then comes back. And that's what he needs to do more force the action himself. And Perdomo didn't exactly parlay that advantage when he scored with that good left hand and drove Bunting back. Certainly he did not. You can see a lot of ring rust on him. Though. 34 years old, a layoff of 20 months is, is, is tough. Yeah, you really have to question how much you want to do the training. I mean, you never lose the ability or the desire to fight, perhaps, but you always have to question how much you're going to pay the price to keep on going. Doing that road work, hitting the gym, eating properly. So, Perdomo is two rounds away, three rounds away, but, uh, scheduled for nine. 
at this point of doing all that but reflecting upon a victory if he keeps going like this. Well, Bunny just threw a jab and landed, and I'm not sure who was more surprised, Bunting or Ferdoma. He should do it. More off. A good left hand by Ferdoma gets in. Everybody's happy here at the, at the Hard Rock, except for the two fighters, perhaps. Now, this event uh, center opened up in 2005, and they've had a lot of big events here. Seated for 5,000, beautiful venue in which to take in a fight. And they sold, they not only sold it out tonight, they more than sold it out tonight. Watch Perdomo here. There's that long hook. But you can see he's not in, it was a, he's a good right hand, but he's, he's not in position with his feet and, his, and lowering his hips and able to turn over. And, and again, I think a lot of that is ring rust slowly first, getting first, knocked man. off. So even when he's landing, he's not turning over his punches. We start round seven. Who's there for Domo, 17 and three, 11 knockouts. He's the lefty from Venezuela. Carl Bunting from Memphis, Tennessee, 18, 3 and 1, 17 knockouts. Dave Bontempo and Ron Borges with you here. The Seminole Hard Rock Casino in South Florida, USA. Perdomo opened this uh, round, pumping his jab a little bit more. Oh, yeah, maybe pumped a little bit from the success he got at the end of last round, the parlay. At the end of the round, he did put a nice four punch combination together. left hook by Bunting. He just missed with the right hand as they closed inside. You can also see from the leaping position with which Bunting threw that left hook, he was not in position to follow. That's been the problem for both fighters tonight. It's interesting because you can see the few times Bunting has mentally sort of committed to throwing the right hand and, and something behind it. His opening's there, but he doesn't do it very often. Bunting is waiting for that right hand counter. But he should be throwing the right hand lead. I'm sure his cornermen are, are, are telling him it's not going to land itself. You're not going to throw it. It's not going to go on its own. You have to help it a little. And uh, almost on cue. Hearing some booze coming from the crowd who... Do not always like the science part of the sweet science. No, they, if they like the sweet it's spot. A hunch, a like hunch. Getting enough. A and Perdomo, on, you know, maybe guys. getting a little bit tired here. Yeah, the delay here at the uh, fight slowing down. Making the fans a little impatient. Good left hand there. Right to the side. Will step in and deduct a point here for holding with bunting. Now that's kind of rude treatment, don't you think? I don't like think he it's had really that and that much violation of any regulations. But the local constabulary steps in. He gets nailed. Not like he's got a big lead and had points to give away. There's that big right hand straight down. Maybe they woke him up, bunch of Well, they insult you a little bit. With the point being taken away, it can have a jolting effect. And this is the most aggressive he's been tonight. Got nothing to lose. We come to the end of the round. We've got a lot of action for you. There's Joey Hernandez. We will see him later against Elko Garcia. Entertaining Joey Hernandez. 
hopes to put on a good show tonight. That will be coming up a little bit later in our telecast. Comes from an interesting sort of fighting family. His dad is an official with the WBO. Was briefly a fighter himself. Sparred with Roberto Duran. And young Joey's mom said, as they were getting ready to get married, if you want to marry me, you stop boxing. And so he did. That started his administrative career. He became an administrator. Seconds up. Well, let's see if Bunting will pick up the flag here, as he did at the end of the last round. At round eight. They tap as if it's it. This was scheduled for nine, so let's see what happens there. Perdomo, 17 and three, 11 knockouts. Bunting, 18, three and one, 17 knockouts. see bunting when Perdomo launches that wild left. It's not like he doesn't give it away. So he pulls it back, he, he rolls his shoulder. I'd like to see bunting one time say, you know what, I'm just going to step inside this in the pocket and let loose because I think it would make for a concussive evening. But again, it's easy for me to say I'm sitting here next to you. It's a safe spot. Right, and you have not yet to hit me, which I appreciate. Perdomo with the left hand, and then we've seen the feet tangle together here. But Bunting never really could get his sense of urgency going in this fight. If you're the counterpuncher and you're the guy waiting, you have to be the guy making it look like you're controlling your opponent by waiting. And at some point, you have to make a decision. If, if, if this guy's not coming forward the way I anticipated, and that's what he thought Perdomo was going to do, just really try to bully him around, which he hasn't really done, although he's been the aggressive, then you've got to change up yourself. And Bunting has uh, not been able to do that. Perdomo. See, that was the sparring part of his partner's mentality. I landed a pretty good shot. I don't follow up. Which is a habit you can get into. Bunting trying to finish up a little bit strong here. All right, we told you there could be surprises. And here's one, scheduled for nine. It's eight, and it's over. Now they'll await the judge's decision. Well, for, for Perdomo, coming off a long layoff, it was, you know, he got a good bit of work. <laughs> Perdomo kept the pressure on and it was a good left hook. That was Bunning's really best fight up. But you can see he backs up rather than coming forward. He lands it down. He steps back. Why would you step back? That's why this went the distance. Among other reasons. That's why he's 18 and 3 on his way to 18 and 4. Well, neither guy looked like they would argue about the fight being shortened by a round. It's over. I may be mistaken, but it appeared to me that that's a tattoo of Che Guevara on Mr. Perdomo's left arm. Is it not? You look right. I think you're correct. Q 
Cuban revolutionary. Apparently a fight fan as well. All right, Mark Lichtenfeld standing by. We'll get the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecard. Michael Pernick and Bill Ray both scored about 79-72. Rocky Young sees about 80 to 71. For your winner by unanimous decision, Kuzmir Azucar Torpedo Perdomo. So Kuzmir Perdomo racks up the win, becomes 18 and three with 11 knockouts. So, posing for photographers, a little victory shot for him. I'm just happy to put this in the books. Don King coming in to pay him a visit. Venezuela, Venezuela. A little projected is Bunting. Yeah, Bunting sort of has that look of a guy who's been through this before.